exporting footage. Now, I should mention a couple things before we start this process. One, you'll notice on like slower computers that this will run a little bit more choppy than it did here. Okay. The reason for that is you should always kind of render the work area as you work. Okay. I didn't have to do that because um, I have a faster machine, so therefore, you know, it's, it's kind of useless to do it. But for people that have slower machines, you should always try to render the entire work area. And what will happen is this green or red bar turns green and everything becomes a lot faster because uh, it takes the footage and uncompresses it to your hard drive. Okay, In, in short, uh, this also leads to a lot of things where it takes up space on your hard drive. So you have to be very careful about rendering, if you know what I mean. On a slower machine, you know, these these clips can quickly build up. I'm just using MP4 footage out of a flip camera, which is totally compressed. Um, and the more compressed the video, the lower the quality half the time. And it's also the slower quality within Adobe Premiere. So lossless compression versus lossy compression. Lossy being compressed, lossless, uncompressed. Lossy is always a little bit draggy. Uh, there's no lossless video footage um, unless you're actually taking it right from the camera via Firewire using a program called On Location. Okay, so that's totally uncompressed. Um, there's always some compression. Even, even if you're shooting on tape, there's some compression. All right, so now when we export, it will actually do this for us. So that's why I didn't do it before because one, I have a fast machine. Two, I'm just going to export it anyway. So I'm going to export media. There's this timeline right here. You notice this right here goes from here to here. Okay. Let, let me just do something real quick. I can move this around. Just know that. So I can tell Premiere where I want the footage to end and begin. That way when I go to export media, you can see that um, that will match this work area. Well, the beginning footage, or footage that's in here right now, is 720p. Okay, that's 1280 by 720. And you can see that right here. It says sequence and s output. Well, here's the key. Um, I don't want to drop my source down to an output that's so small because I would lose quality, right? But it all depends where you're going with this. Okay, we're going to go two different locations with it. One, I'm going to drop it down to 720 by 480 from 1280 by 720, and this is what it's going to look like. Okay, it's going to clip some out of it. And it, it didn't clip per se, but it, what it did is shrunk the video to a new frame. This frame is synonymous with DVD. Okay, right here, I'm going to output name this DVD. Okay, and save it. And I'm just going to hit export. Now, yeah, on even faster machines, this little window right here takes tenths of a second. Um, mine takes a little bit longer, still others very long. So, Premiere has a lot to do with how many processors you have and uh, what size processor you have. It has very little to do with memory. It's more processing speed than anything else.
Now, if you chose to render the entire work area, this bar would not be here. I would cut this up into two clips, but really I want to kind of keep the exporting one all together. So if you want, you can just fast forward through all this stuff right here, which I know you will anyway. Okay, so what happened? Well, there's this other program that's launching right now. It's going to launch in about a couple seconds. It's the Adobe Premiere Encoder. Okay. And its job is to actually render it out. So this gets shipped off to another program behind your back. And that program's job is to do that. And it does take a few seconds for that to show up. But I can hear my hard drive spinning, so that means it is on its way. I think this is where most students are like, oh, this takes forever. Well, welcome to video. Video people are very patient people. Somewhat. While that's doing that, I'm also going to go into export media and show you this one. So I'm going to drop this down to FLV, F4V. And you'll notice that it is now 1280 by 720. Okay, same as source. This one, I'm going to name web. And I'm going to put that in the queue. Okay, so now there's two videos in the queue. And here's Adobe Media Encoder, as promised. And there's the first one, well, there's the second one, but let's add the other one in there. I don't think it showed. So let's export media and drop this back down to QuickTime. And we'll just add that to the queue rather than export. There we go. Cool. Now I could change the name here if I want to. So it looks like it rendered out the movie. Huh, that's really weird. Must be a CS5 thing. So now we got the FLV and the QuickTime, okay? One's for the web, one's for the DVD. And I can just hit start queue. This is the point where uh, you go get something to eat and then come back, usually. So uh, I'll meet you back in the next video when these two cook out, and I'll show you what we can do with them.